recording wrong. What's new? Totally. Oh. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Try we not to pay before. attention to the dogs behind me. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball puppy culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Leva Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and build it yourself. Mm. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, we're lucky, and Chrissy gives us some PPE, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the individual social <laughs> paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental, and we are Everyone Racers. Thanks so much for coming back and listening to a strato tanker episode of this podcast it's episode kc 135 we might have one or two listeners that actually uh, really get a kick out of that if you are not driving a car and you're not because we're all on corona vacation got pulled over again today for not having plates uh, and okay. uh, pulled over. wait you, you don't have over? any plates no because i ordered my plates before all this started and you have to go to the dmd to pick them up i have vanity plates now they've sent out a letter that says the little sheet of paper that we gave you is good for 90 additional days and both times the the law enforcement officers are like oh okay yeah no problem you're good to go and they're very nice and they're very polite but for me to get from here to base i have to drive through let's be honest i got to drive through the hood i'm in a 10 year old highly collectible mercedes the you know, I don't know about highly collectible, but go oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry not, not highly collectible. The phrase I'm looking for is um, on Apex adjacent, they call it an Icarus car, where you go to that buy here, pay here lot, and you buy that car with all the deferred maintenance that's just yeah. outside of your building. <laughs> now, <laughs> mine has been maintained impeccably, and I know yes. this, but there are a lot of CLS 550s rolling around in the hood belonging to some guys that, you know, <laughs> dealing recreational pharmaceuticals. And so I, every time I get pulled over, I know exactly why I get pulled over. And the guy walks up <clears throat> and I was in uniform one time and another time I'm not, and they walk up and go, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you can go on. white boy. <laughs> I'm here to harass minorities, not uh, members uh, of the military. The first time on my t-shirt, the guy was really, he was like, you've been in trouble with the law i'm like no uh, why and and he kept he asked me that like four times you know do you do you, do you get in trouble with the law and i'm like no no and i realized after i drove off it's because i had my window down the interior light on you know my hands on the steering wheel so i made eye contact every time i had to reach for something oh that's in my center console uh my insurance is in the glove compartment because that's what you do when you get pulled over yeah and 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 he's He's like, oh, this guy's been pulled over a bunch, which, which I have, but not for the reasons he thinks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you're I, a felon. <laughs> I, I, I have exactly, said this a exactly. hundred times, and I've probably said it on the podcast. Every time I talk about social justice, I, we talk about owning our white privilege, and I own my white privilege of speeding and driving like a nut job <laughs> with the knowledge that I'm probably not going to get killed and I could probably talk myself out of the ticket. And, yeah. you usually and I do. understand that that is not the experience of a large portion of America. So I'm slightly jealous of your military uniform privilege because <laughs> you probably could like peel out in front of the cop shop and still get away with it. Not in front of the cop shop, but I have done a power slide in my old Mercedes in front of a cop and got away with it. Yeah. Mickey well, you also, you, you casually slide the military ID under the driver's license when you hand it to the, you know, oh, oh. Did, I, did I accidentally give you that? I'm sorry. It was under I'm, my license. Under, no, that's, that's way too subtle. I do that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the one you're looking for. That's the <laughs> one. Not. That's the one I give. Oh, sorry. Let gosh. me put that active duty. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. All right. We didn't even so, start with you. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, the show is so derailed. So, so derailed. Maybe Folks, we can get better. Like all of our lives, really. <laughs> bust, out, bust out that uh, that E one R bingo card. Go ahead and check off that Chris tells a story. Mental tells a story that goes nowhere, and uh, we'll. And if you get bingo, I throw it up there. All right. I, so I didn't even open my bingo card because I don't open it until they say it. And now I feel like I missed half of it. Go on. <laughs> Let's go with what you're working on, Chris. I've been disassembling our enclosed trailer as part of the upgrade project. So 
part of it was figuring out how to take all, you've got to take all the wall panels off. Cause this trailer had a, had a plywood walls and um, a, a kind of white covered Luan plywood ceiling. So I got to take the walls off. They look like they're Torx bits. I got my Torx. I get all of them out. None of them really fit right. I think it's because they've been painted over. I'm trying other stuff. I'm trying Allen's. I'm trying everything. Nothing fits. And then you know, I start picking away at the paint on some of them. And I find some with no paint. And I, then I, I look carefully and I say, well, hang on a second. One, two, I'm counting the stars. These are eight star drive. Like security bits. They're, yeah, instead of Torx is six, these yeah. are eight. They're no, called, I totally know what you're saying. They're called double squares, not triple squares like Volkswagen axles, which are triple squares, which is <laughs> stupid. But double squares. So, so, so your trailer was assembled by General Motors or Volkswagen? No, apparently this is a trailer <laughs> thing. Like this <laughs> happens on trailers. Yeah. So, but then what I, I, then I, you know, I, I used some logic and I said, well, hang on. If it's two squares, maybe one square will work. And I pulled my square bits out and found one of them that worked perfectly and got most of them out that way. There's a couple that you know, stripped out enough from when I was playing with it that didn't work. So I got the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel out and carved a notch into them and put a big ass flathead screwdriver and worked them out that way. Yeah. My, um, mine are all squares. And I thought that like, but like different size squares. Yeah. So I had to buy like the $5 Harbor Freight, like set O squares. Set O everything. <laughs> right. I mean, I wish that was it. It just, it took me, I'm not, this is kind of embarrassing, like an hour to figure it out. By the time I was like, go walk from the trailer to the shop, pick some things, go back, back and forth, back and forth. What the hell? Why isn't this working? This is dumb. Looking things up. It's, yeah. Anyway, the walls are, are, Everything except all the walls are off except the very front panels because there's the the built-in above storage toolbox that I've got there, and I don't want to take that off yet. So I'm going to do the whole back of the trailer and the whole ceiling, and then once that's done, move the front and do that. So anyway, it's all disassembled. It was a slight pain in the ass, but it worked out. Um, the uh, some of the parts are on the way. I have a 55 items in my cart from Home Depot right now that I'm going to buy and pick up in store because all like the insulation panels and stuff, I got to get all that crap. And this is a surprisingly complicated project. Once I've started really thinking through it and ordering parts, there's a lot of stuff that goes into a full AC and DC electrical system with storage, with inverter, with all that crap. And I'm not even doing like solar. So are you adding, it, are you adding water? No, no, no water. Water is tech. So, so I've like watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to do this, yeah. and I have decided like, oh, this is really complicated. So I'm excited to see what you do to then decide what I can do it do. even half-assed. No, no, no. <laughs> like it's not even half-assed. It's hey, hey, hey. That's my job. It, it, <laughs> it's like I want to do it, but I'm not ready to bite off that big of a chew. Yeah, I'm. Uh, halfway in right now i'm almost at the point of you know i should just use some extension cords in the generator that, really like, see know. i was thinking about going full dc and putting no ac and just running cords for the ac yeah like and then having like an inverter so i have like one or two plugs yeah on I a couple of big batteries my thought was that if i was gonna run anything i had to take the wall panels off if i have the wall panels off well then i need to insulate well mm -hmm. if i have everything really apart then well, damn it i'm best to get her better do it right and so that's where it lent me and while you're in there itis we're all getting i know it. it never works out well while you're doing it it's terrible but yeah. i don't know your kitchen turned out pretty darn good <laughs> only it's six or no eight years later but yeah <laughs> yeah but it's still awesome <laughs> yeah the whole house looks great now but it just took a while with while you're in there itis yeah. Anyway, so did that, did some lawn care. Um, I don't have any stories about lawn care like Jeff. I mean, you know, I've got the lawn. You, did, you, didn't mow your, you didn't mow your lawn and, you know, find a truck or something? No, I didn't have to also like try three mowers to find one that works. None of that stuff at all. No like rocks, fun. no rocks shooting out and smashing your, uh, your wife's car. <laughs> no, 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 all good. Easy, easy. Um, did some cooking and I uh, ordered all those trailer parts. That's about it. Trailer is now, trailer and truck are now at the local mechanics trying to give them a little business. They're a nice little father son shop that's been good to me and uh, will, you know, deals with my various assorted bullshit. Um, and uh, so trying to give them some work of things that I just don't want to do, like pack the wheel bearings in the trailer and adjust the brakes and, you know, do the tra transmission flush on the Suburban. I don't, I don't want to do any of those things. So we, we have listeners in the Pennsylvania area. Why don't you go ahead and plug that uh, fine trailer shop there? 
Uh, it's it's a, a general mechanic shop. They do everything, including the uh, the owner has his Chevy S10 with a motor out trying to put an LS in it at some point. Nice. So like, there we go. Those are our kinds of people. That guy can work on our trailer. And the, yeah. and the son's got some got a couple of Fieros. And, uh, like, plus he's, uh, Ooh, never mind. Ike, Ike yeah. are you listening? <laughs> uh, no Fieros. They're, they're great. Um, very good di- diagnosticians, actually, too. Mm-hmm. They're not just parts replacers. They really actually dig and diagnose stuff. Uh, it's called Doterer's Garage, D-O-T-T-E-R-E-R-S, uh, right 422 in, uh, in Birdsboro. Mm-hmm. Is that the same one that used to do all your inspections? No, that was a, a no. larger ch- local chain okay, that we yeah. got. That they're dead to me now. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mess with Chris. Yeah. They, they're the ones that screwed up the tire install like 12 times. I'll say, yeah, yeah it wasn't that, like the one time. It was multiple times. So Doterers, yeah. they, they've, got it, they've got it all figured out. They've been great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Chrissy, Chrissy, you, 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 uh, you, I'm reading yours. It reminds me of uh, what Alan Caesar posted on Facebook today about the, in, uh, the Nine Inch Nails song, I Can See the Future because every day is exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was like, okay, what did I do? What day is it? Okay, it's middle of the week someday. I was home this weekend. Did it's I do a non drinking day? Did, did I? Uh. Yes. Did I? Did I clean the porch? No, that was last week. I right. I has really had to sit here and think. Um, but the one fun thing is. We decided uh, to have a picnic for my father's birthday. He is uh, quarantining away from us. So, uh, so it's my whole family, my mom, we're all, we, I, I've heard the term co-quarantining. So uh, my sister's family, my mom are up at my sister's house and Chris and I are here and we see each other and we're, we're all kind of co-mingling. But my dad is not. And he also had to work recently and go to work. So um, we are away from him. So Chris's idea was to have dinner with him or lunch with him in a park and he can sit at a park table over there and we'll sit over here. And we'll like shimmy over and like give him a plate of food and then come back. And so we did. <laughs> but to find a place where we're going to meet, we're going to meet out on Sunday, uh, we decided to go for a drive. So actually Chris's additional suggestion was let's, why don't you go some places, go look at some parks to see if they're open, if there's, you know, picnic tables, if there's places to go. So I took my mom in the NSX. And we oh. went down to, she has not been in it. Uh, we went down to the park that's in French Creek State Park, which is really oh, like right, I know outside, that is. right outside of our, our house. It's, it's right down some windy roads in, in, the, um, in, the, in the forest kind of behind our house. Uh, so I took her down there and we had, a, uh, we had a good time. I, you know, kind of peeled out and drove, you know, shifted a couple times pretty hard. And, and, and so she's like, it's so loud. <laughs> that's what she comes out with it's, it's so loud that's what she, i was like does it isn't it nice it's comfy and i was like i, I was like oh does it, your view out the front that's is that awesome that's like, like the quiet that's like the quietest car you guys own. no 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 no, no, no it's not got no. Some good pipes on it these days you haven't it heard does. it with the with no you've driven it with you the good have. exhost on it oh okay it, 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 I, at the time it was it's loud when you romp on it sure yeah yeah it's quiet at least it it felt Inside, it felt quieter than the Suburban. It's, quieter it's than not the... average Mustang. No, it's quieter, than the, it's, quieter than, yeah. it's quieter than the Big Block 3. Right, well, okay. Dr- well, it drones bet- like between 2,000 and 2,700 RPM if the top is on. So mm-hmm. you, it just means you have to keep the RPMs up. And I wasn't know. doing it in the right Yes. gear and right whatever so anyway it was loud but she also drives a Mazda 5 and uh and then the next day we took my new Benz uh so she's very she's used to quieter cars so right it's not the loudest car but it's the loudest car that she usually goes in so uh when are we getting the unpacking video on the new Benz when I get a time to actually look at the damn car because I sit in my house and I don't go to my car so I will do it I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to leave the house tomorrow I'll put this at the end okay so I have to leave the house so I'm gonna drive it so I took my mom out in the end sex and we had a good time and she just kept saying it's so loud I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like it's fun anyway which it means you were driving it hard uh, no not even hard like not hard, like i know. shifted no, just You're, like, you were in it spirited. would you say spir- spirited i like yeah, that yeah spirited. no i wasn't this was not hard anyway uh so then we had our, on sunday we were ended up all day saturday sunday morning was cooking for my whole family so we made a couple of, uh different kinds of chicken salad had all kinds of buns and chips and side dishes and all kinds of cookies and bars because that's what she does and, and cake uh so yes yeah, so we had a successful birthday party uh, so, uh six feet away from he stayed six feet away from us 
Uh, and then we had rum tasting, which was super fun. So we came back and had rum tasting. Uh, and a whole bunch of our favorites were missing, but we tasted what we had. Uh, found some good ones, found some bad ones. So that was good. And, uh, and then, uh, so yeah, so tomorrow I have to leave the house. I'm a little scared. Um, just because it's weird. It's, it's not this great cloud that's hovering outside. Like, you know, work. you're... you're Put on a mask. Stay away from people. You'll be fine. Right. So I'm going actually to work uh, and the, with the rest of my team. And we are going to stand in our uh, very large lunchroom and pack 60 of the 90,000 masks we have. Uh, to hey, that's ship, awesome. Ship, ship them to all of our district offices. So I've been handling all of the logistics, which have been a little bit of a nightmare to get all of these different amounts of we're sending surgical right now. And then we also have a package of FR. So fire resistant um, type masks for people yeah. that are doing a lot of lighting of pilots and stuff like that. So, uh, so they will be burn resistant, which is nice. Cause I would argue that breathing flaming propane is probably a little worse than COVID. Uh, well, you don't usually breathe, fl you don't flames. Do <laughs> I mean, you can get, if you have flames, you're in more trouble than that, but, uh, that's a byproduct of propane. Anyway. Uh, so that's what I'm doing tomorrow. So I'm leaving the house and Chris was like, you should take the Mazda. And I was like, I have a new car out there. I'm taking the new car. So we'll yeah! see. So we'll yeah, see. Take Chris, that. what a know. stupid idea. That is a dumb idea, Chris. And you don't have dumb ideas. I'm trying to get it to 250 as soon as I can. <laughs> I get one time in the why I, I can't I can't come there and help build it so take your time yeah I can't I I haven't gone anywhere in the first five weeks uh so I'm gonna go in my car so I'll tell you how it is after that maybe we'll do it this weekend but I know everybody wants to see it so I will at least take some pictures soon excellent Jeff. So, well no we've skipped over you what are you doing no, we haven't gone to Jeff yet, have we? That's fine. We could do me next. Uh, so I, I, I just like Chrissy went just the lovely and talented Jennifer. Did we have a weekend? I, I don't remember what weekend. What was the weekend? Uh, Every day is exactly, exactly the same. So uh, and then she reminded me we did a drive through tulip farm which was not too far from us. Oh. There's a farm that has tulips and they have like a, they have a tool on normal non COVID years. They have like a tulip festival. So this year you could like pay 20 bucks and drive through and stay in your little COVID cocoon and not get into anybody else's COVID. Cocoon. I'm guessing you weren't in your car. Cause there's all kinds of communicable disease. No, no, no. Well, I mean, we, we took my soup. mother, <laughs> um, my father who, when he stayed here, we couldn't get him to stay in the house refuses now to leave the house so we own, were like he's in his own house so yeah so Maybe. we were like we were like oh you all should go with us you know and be in the car behind us and we'll all go look at the tulips together and he's like oh no can't leave the house so we oh. put we put my mom in my car and the four of us jen josh my mom uh we all went to the tulip farm and then the state of new jersey said oh wait a minute that's not essential and they closed it so we were Aww. like the last day the tulip farm was open. It was very, it was very lovely. I don't know about 20 bucks, but in, in COVID world, you'll do anything to get out of the house. Right? <laughs> Just so you can see the outside. I'm all about, you know, the essential, non-essential, but if your business can function and maintain CDC guidelines, why not? Like yeah, the, 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 I agree. You have I was talking powers. to somebody in Michigan, uh, the, the, the nurseries in Michigan, because it's planting season in Michigan. And you ever been to a, like a large nursery? you're socially distanced it's a you know and and they're letting lows and all those people sell plants why wouldn't they let the nurseries and get out in your yard and get some exercise yeah yeah i, I i'm having a furious argument with some people online uh you know on facebook where all the arguments happen about oh, and well yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially yours because you've got some such a variety yeah, and, and you'll and you will totally convince them no, not at all. Because I'm not doesn't. even I'm not even arguing that hard, but it happens between all of my friends. But anyway, and I I called the protesters idiots, and I know men they are idiots. There, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, like I'm not against opening the world. I'm against opening the world and having people like hang out and go bowling because. It's, it's like not, tomorrow. Yeah, it's not like CDC yeah. safe. Uh, if if your business is CDC safe, you should probably tr be able to open soon. Maybe not right now, maybe, but you know, 
we should be talking about that. Anyway, this is not everyone politics. Let me get back to it. <laughs> um, There's so, so many other podcasts for know, that if you want to. Well, in, in two that, so, so now we go to, uh, uh, I'm actually, we're kind of going back to work. They have announced. Wait, wait, I'm still going. I still have stuff. <sighs> <laughs> but I want to talk about me. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, I did mow the lawn, but I don't have that great of a story. Other than, for some reason, all of my plastic, like three, five gallon jugs of gas, like gas jugs, have all sprung leaks. They all got brittle. And when I fill them up, they kind of. On the outside? On the, yeah. The, I mean, some, no, garage, mostly stored in the garage. I mean, I store them like outside for part of the year, you know, when they have gas in them and it's the summer, I leave them outside. So I don't know why, but I used it as an excuse to go to the Harbor Freights. And I got to go tool shopping and I was like, oh my God, I know I'm wearing a mask, but it's people in tools. Did, I you, so did you buy everything? I, 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 I went like when they only had like a half hour left to be open. <laughs> and the aluminum racing jack that I've been waiting to replace, my old aluminum racing jack was on sale. So I bought that. That's the only frivolous purchase. Ooh, ooh, wait, 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 only wait, 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 frivolous wait. purchase. Uh, what, what's it on sale for? Uh, it was one. I got to go look. One thirty nine. It's the two and a half ton. That's it's That's it's the bad. one I like. The I think the like the, the two ton is too small. That's what. Was, whatever. All I want to really know is Goldilocks without the hair. Exactly. Who are these people racing their that jacks? Was funny. Come on. It is good. I liked it. <laughs> but I, I, who are these people who are racing their jacks? It's a racing jack. I brought it home. It wasn't that fast. I think it was the also driver. funny. I honestly think it was the driver in that no, particular I, Just, just go. I on. think just you go. take that, you take that aluminum jack and you put it in Chris's hands, and it's going to be fast. Chrissy's joke was better than mine. <laughs> I'm Neither done. Neither of you laughed. So <laughs> mental. <laughs> mental. <laughs> what are you working on? <clears throat> We're actually <laughs> back to work. They are ro rolling out a phased system of how, and it's going to be over the next thirty days. How we're going to get you back to work? I'm still working every other day. But my days are starting to stretch into full days. So rather than leaving it, you know, I've actually been going to work and doing stuff the whole time. So I, I actually Aww. had to Those leave bastards. early today to make. Oh no, that's cool. I mean, you know, I'm getting back to it. Um, I am uh, also announcing my candidacy for mayor of Las Vegas. They will be holding elections in 2024. If you have not seen the interview with Carolyn Goodman, the mayor of Las Vegas, on Anderson Cooper, she actually makes Anderson Cooper upset that's that's how bad and stupid she is and my motto is going to be i i can't be any worse so i'm going to do that i've actually been doing a lot of i racing outside of the leagues that we're in and i've got my i got my d license i got to knock out two more races to get my c license i've been doing the formula of renault at road atlanta that is hard but i've been having a lot of fun with that that's been cool stuff but yeah other than that I've been painting a lot of my iRace cars. Does that count as work, like car work? I, I, I've also, now that I learned how to do it, I'm painting mine, but I'm not doing them like race cars. I'm going online and I'm finding interesting patterns that I like on Pinterest, and then I'm just layer them, layering them over cars. Hmm. Hmm. Chris asked okay. about, is, uh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. I was going to explain <laughs> my new livery. What is your Wait, new livery? Don't we have the racers, Rona? Yes, Rana. let's do that. We'll do that in racers. Let's keep going. All news. right, so now it's time for news and notes. Oh, news and notes. New <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> news, <laughs> news and notes. Uh, Chrissy, please tell me you read ahead and read the story that I was going to post. It's about no. racers and giraffes. No, I, I didn't read it, but I will. Okay, Tell me Matt, about it. Matt DiBetta, DiBetta Detto, is that his name? I'm not really sure. Um, that is definitely Italian. There's a whole lot of definitely that. Italian. He's an Irish kid. Right? <laughs> um, so he inexplicably, like, they're, you know, they're all eye racing. He uh, inexplicably got on his Twitter account and gave a, like, he quit and he, like, left the race, but not in, like, a huff or anything like that. And he showed everyone on his Twitter account that he was racing in his giraffe onesie. Yes, he is. And after the race, he had this diatribe on, on, on Twitter that I, I would only say is weird. Like, I... 
weird for a NASCAR guy. Like he would totally fit in. Like, and, and over the staff. last over the last few months, NASCAR has set a really high bar for weird and unacceptable. Yeah. So so <laughs> they had a relatively like nobody said the N word and nobody got freaked out. But he got booted for like uh for uh, doing a pit maneuver on someone who hit him. So they booted him from the race. So he basically got on Twitter and was in a onesie and basically said, screw those people. Don't they know it's only fun? We're out there having a good time. So I spun him out. Get over it. I'm wearing a onesie, yo. So, <laughs> you got to see it. It's really I'm, I'm watching the video. Right. So, he, so it sounds like he's going to get an IMSA ride then, probably. If he's like, yeah, I mean. And, and, and know, it was they funny. got that thing about furries in IMSA. Like I said, it was payback. Was it a dirty? It's eye racing, people. Get it over it. Except Love I that. was pissed. Okay, we'll, we'll get over it. We'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> Am I doing both stories? Speaking of NASCAR, I'll Very just keep going. Down. Speaking of NASCAR, it might be back soon. Yes, you heard me right. Uh, the Vegas mayor is not the only one trying to open. Uh, NASCAR may be back tw the 24th of May. And in early June, NASCAR and Indy, in May 24th, NASCAR is scheduled for Charlotte. In June, it's scheduled for Texas. There's also an Indy race scheduled for Texas in June. And both of their states have governors who are pushing to be open. Uh, NASCAR has said publicly that when the states are ready to be open, they are ready to hold um, a fanless races. So it looks like the earliest NASCAR race might be as early as May 24th. Fanless races. NASCAR has been doing that for years. <laughs> You're funny. Indy, IndyCar has uh, been doing that for years. NASCAR uh, has some fans. your waitresses and bartenders. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, the, the story I'm going to post on the, on the notes, uh, Brad Kowalski, who's a, uh, is, 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 how do you say it? Kowalski. Kielowski. Kielowski. Brad Kielowski. Whatever. Uh, he's one of the big go dogs. He's basically saying, uh, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. I'm feeling kind of, I want to race, but I'm feeling kind of conflicted about this. Cause so, he cares about his fans. He's absolutely. He's, he's, it's the, you know, read the story again. I don't want to make this everyone politics, but that's where it is. Chrissy, I know you got something on this. Well, it's Wait. not everyone politics, but it's more of like, you can have fanless races, but you still have a whole heck of a lot of people that are coming in and standing next to each other. You have to have a pit crew. You have to have people dealing with the cars. So all of those people still need to stand next to each other. Like you still, it, even by end of May, like hopefully we're better, but that's like, that seems that's what's still irresponsible. Mm -hmm. We can talk about fans and not having millions of fans, but you still have people that need to run the race. Yeah. Yeah, so he said, uh, I'm terribly conflicted. I think it's important that we do things to get back going as fast as we can. But in the same token, I really don't want to see anyone getting sick or that shouldn't get sick. That's preventable. I'm really torn. Mm -hmm. I sympathize with those who have to make the decisions because there's really not any good options. We can't sit around doing nothing because we're draining vital resources. So, you know, he talks about the whole thing. How are they going to keep their radiators cool without any fans? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's it's getting bad. In here. Well, I think, and only one of us is drinking tonight. So. I feel like I feel like that's a. It's 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 not really a dad joke, but it's definitely an uncle joke. <laughs> Sorry, I was totally not prepared to trombone. I haven't been practicing. You're not. Is tromboning a verb? I'm I feel like I now. feel like I feel like they could engineer a solution. Oh. 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 Only the ones that drive trains. <laughs> oh, no, my no. brain. Let's move on. Racers All in right. reaction. In uh, an and, and, uh, unfortunate news that actually does kind of bear into this, 1981 IndyCar Rookie of the Year, Bob Lazier, has passed away at age 81 from complications involving uh, COVID-19. And he's an interesting guy. He very much started out an amateur, very much kind of a Randy type story you know got into it as a hobby and worked his way up through scca ranks and, and, and ran an indy car one year the next year he went back failed to qualify but he got to do it and was very gregarious and, and full of life kind of person did a lot of historic vintage racing and an open top corvette and he will be lost link to that story is in our show notes i'm not he will be missed his loss will be noted and the link to that story is in our show notes 
That's terrible. Uh, big vintage guy. Anybody who pays yeah. attention to current vintage, he's all over it. Uh, we held fake races or trial races or what, what are we calling them? Excuse me, I don't want to say. Better I races. I know they're iRacing. Uh, they're not paying <laughs> us, so I was trying not to use their name. Uh, sim races. Let's do that. Uh, we held some sim races every Monday. Everyone racers, invitational, which means you email us, you get the code. It's four letters. It's on the bingo card. It helps stop our car. You figure it out. Oh, well, um, just, what, what, yeah. is, what is it listed under the hosted racing? Uh, every E1R. 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 Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Monday, yeah, so. 9 p.m. East. Join us if you're out there and you got an iRacing setup. Uh, Chris. And it, there is a delay in the hosted racing. So you like get on there at nine o'clock. You got to hit refresh a couple times. By 9.03 or, or four, it'll show up. Exactly. No, uh, we, we, we've had some people that wanted to join and they felt like we were trying to shut them out. And it's just, it's, it's, it's software. We're, anybody that wants that password, email us. We're happy to have you. Oh, absolutely. If you're a listener and you're hearing me, we'll give you the password. Absolutely. Your brother iRaces, pass it on to him. We're not like trying to be too unless heavy at the door. Yeah, yeah, unless he's a jerk. But there are a lot of jerks out there and we don't want to open it up to the world so yes. that's why we're doing it but if you can hear me you can have the password or just figure it out yourself but i want to talk about this week's race because we were tuning up at a race a track that we've all actually been on uh, most of us we have uh, but not everybody that was racing had true done. True. There was one or two that had not and, been there and chrissy you joined us for one of I the did. races i did yeah um yeah I, I want to I let you go first because I like what you're going to say. <laughs> I was doing really well. So I was staying out of trouble. Uh, I was, I don't know where I qualified, but I know the track pretty well. Um, yeah, so I was doing pretty well. And then I uh, got flipped. Not even going <laughs> to yes, say, it's did. not even my fault. Like I no. literally, the guy, I don't know who it was. It was a I do. Was, Are do we going to say? Yeah, it's Darby, I think. Sure. Uh oh well i said let me i'll give you a point by very shortly he drove under my wheel flipped me over this was in coming down to the hill in turn four at some point so we are at some point and i was i acknowledged that he was there just give me a second let me get around this corner and he went under my wheel flipped me over onto the outside of the track and this was one like three two or la two or three laps before the end of the race yeah and i don't know where i was it doesn't I, really matter but i was, I was just right a behind you so i got to kind of see it i was just annoyed <laughs> because i was staying out of people's way i was trying to be polite i wasn't hitting people it was carnage really because uh it was uh, cars were just all over the place uh they just it's it's fun really because when you you're like, oh, I'm going to try to get up with them or race them. And then they just, people just spin out all over the place by themselves. Just it's still less carnage than Lemons Eye Racing. Though. Yeah. I well, didn't do Lemons. So yeah. I didn't do Lemons. But and we um, love Lemons Eye Racing. We just don't love eye racing with lemons. No, but this this group was really good. It was a small crowd. We think we had, what, 15 to 18. And, so and we was, pretty much knew everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think they're friends of friends. So it was fine. Except. Jeff is the worst eye racer still I have ever met. I don't <laughs> understand. So, you know, I, I'm talking about like, you know, pushing too hard or you oh, too fast. Or, too hard. Then, but you, I don't think you break enough is actually what happened. Yes, so I was doing yes. the same thing. And Chris I, was like, I, you, I have to break. stand on the brakes. You go down, slow down to what you think is two miles an hour. And you're actually going enough to not carry so much speed to just go off the track. You You've can got, adjust that too in the braking pressure. Somewhere. Well, I have it set the way I have it set. You can push hard, but it, you're never going to lock the brakes up on that car on the solstice. Okay. So just stand up. But when you're in another car, like a radical or something, and you have to modulate it, it works out perfectly. So it's it's fine. Work. It's just it's getting used to any car, right? If I was in a car, I'd be able to figure out that I need to brake more to get around the corner. Uh, but this time, but I saw Jeff more times than not. S straight off start like the turn is coming <laughs> and or, i just go straight into the grass or you went to the like left side and this is on the straight you're just driving on the straight and all of a sudden i see you hit one wall smack across the track to go to the other wall and i'm just like if you hit me i i'm getting by oh look there's a cat it's a podcat that's cute um for those of you who don't know this will be on uh on, on the old well, well, we're talking YouTube's. about that let's our feedback shut up let's oh, sorry feedback. and and chris's cat is massaging the microphone with ASMR cat anyway so um so Jeff is the worst I'm terrible I don't I don't understand why you're so bad um I'm not the best eye racer I did a fine job I just you're so bad at least I, Jeff is now no longer blowing motors every lap yeah so <laughs> I, I have fixed 
some of the issues. I am brand new at iRacing. I so am I. Had to set up. So for, am I. Oh no, you had to set up months before I. I did. haven't used it. I was and, getting sick every other lap for a while. And and I also have a way worse setup. So the so so these are not excuses because I fixed most of it and this I'm still the terrible. When I have. This is why this is on YouTube now. This is the best. <laughs> Here's a little violin. So, so uh, I did a lot of work over the weekend to where <laughs> I no longer have half the excuses. I just cannot. Good. Like, like it used to be like, like the week before when I raced, like the feedback was moving the table. So I would be here and I'd go like this and the table would move because like I fixed all that. <laughs> like I, and so now it's just totally me. It's just totally okay. me having no ability to understand my speed and my grip. No. Like I'm convinced I should have more grip. And then I turn and I go straight. Yeah. You, yeah. You honestly, you, you'd have everything with the lottery. Do some of those MX-5 races at Charlotte, and you will really start to develop a sense. Uh, you will also MX-5 as much as most other people. Yeah, so. but you will also find out that Lemons racers, not even top 20% of worst friggin' human beings. Oh. One, guy, one guy at a Charlotte race literally just turned around, drove into everybody just to see what I... I Come on. So stop ruining for everybody, especially when you have to reset your car, buy a new car. It's so dumb. Yeah. So I, I have decided I have, I, I, after the first week of the debacle, I, I was, I did a giraffe car. I had a giraffe solstice. I was so embarrassed by the way that I drive, <laughs> that I didn't want it actually connected to my team at all. So <laughs> I did a new li livery so that people wouldn't be like, oh, that's that guy. I was looking for you, and then I. But everybody knows who you are. That's the problem. Is that you know you're like, oh, it's that terrible guy. Oh, yeah, it's the yeah. same guy. Like, for those of you on YouTube, look behind Chris right now. That's what my our car looked like. It was fantastic. It had a puppet, like like a puppet giraffe that was eating the number on the hood. It was amazing. I was so proud of it. No, you've got a picture of it on YouTube. Or on, I on was Facebook, so embarrassed Facebook, by my driving. I refused to drive it. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, so, really. Yeah, no, it was terrible. So, so the equivalent uh, of like putting a paper bag over your head exactly. is basically what you're doing. <laughs> so, um, oh, uh, no. I ordered a watch recently. I think I mentioned that on the podcast in the past. It's a, it's a, it's a Citizen Bullhead. It's the same watch that Brad Pitt wore in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's very nerdy. But anyway, I bought it out of Mexico, and for some reason, written on Sharpie in the, on the box, like on the bubble wrap around the box, it said <laughs> Blanco Diablo. You didn't. You only told this story on the Slack. Okay. So, <laughs> so the guy called me the white devil. I don't know why. <laughs> he and saw I, you eye racing. Oh, I, I, no, no. Crazy. This is before this I guy's started. terrible. So I yeah. posted that on Facebook and Judge Rich said, this has to be your new me Mexican wrestler name. <laughs> and then someone okay. else said, this should be your name in eye racing. Mm -hmm. So I made a new car with, that's all white and it's got devils all over it. And it's Diablo Blanco or Blanco Diablo. It's still terrible. Remember. But but I, I have been practicing and I'm better at the Jetta, so I'm actually going back to the Jetta next this Thursday. Okay. But I'm still terrible. Like I've gone from totally terrible to I can sort of keep it on the track. Sometimes. Until you did you put it into the trees? Was it you who went into the trees? Somebody no, no, went no, into the trees. Uh, we'll talk about that. It was Chris? I didn't. Oh, uh, just different time. Okay. I got knocked. I got knocked into the trees. Yeah, spectacular. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I do have to say because I did watch the flip that happened with Chrissy. And... No, 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 no. Oh, is read, it in the read the notes? I, I can't read. God. The notes. I have a job. Why, why do? Why do I? Do Go on. Sure. I'm done. All right. So yes, we. Uh, <laughs> Jeff is terrible still. Chris, please. <laughs> uh, so hey, our uh, <clears throat> our announcement about this whole thing really garnered some good response, which leads us into listener, listener feedback. feedback. So DJ nine fourteen Eric K wished everyone good luck because his PC is on the way. He's tired of not having fun with us. Dan G, 
uh, said, quote, this is a time when there's almost nothing to fear missing out on, and you guys have to go and totally ruin that with this expensive new hobby. He is right. This is stupid expensive. Stupid hobby. By the time I gather up all the third owner crap that is barely run, this stuff, nobody is ever going to be doing it anymore. Thanks. And I, I disagree. I'm, I'm actually pretty addicted to it. I've been setting my alarm and getting up and knocking out some qualification races in the morning, like at five in the morning. What? <laughs> and what? so I'm going to be staying with it. I, I am really working on being smooth and, and training my vision a lot better. It's addictive. And honestly, Dan, if your iRacing rig is anything like the cars you keep building, it's probably going to be really, really awesome and just look sketchy as hell. Daring Greatly Racing, the Cadillac boys, said they had fun, even though, quote, I was brutally murdered in the, thing, in the first race. Thanks for host, hosting. And finally, Dr. Donnie P. said, I just spent my iRacing PC money on a Volvo. Is this your way of guilting me into spending that money anyway, isn't it? Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, I just want to mention that if uh, Donnie P., uh, Dr. Donnie, starts racing with us, I'm definitely hitting him first. <laughs> Oh, good. If, Thanks. If I, if I can keep it on the track. I think Donnie will spend all of his time shopping for a school bus. At, at, at the Lemons practice, <laughs> uh, I was on the, the Discord with a few of uh, Three Pedal Mafia folks, and there were some people racing who we wanted to knock off who were not Lemons racers. And I said, oh, ooh, I'll do it. And then they went by <laughs> and I crashed, and I couldn't even hit them. I was so bad I couldn't even hit somebody. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, uh, Mike H. said, I already know I suck at virtual racing, so how do I spectate? Maybe Jeff should do this. Uh, no, I said that. Uh, we're working on that. Santiago has a Switch account, and, or Twitch, Twitch account. Twitch. Whew, Twitch. And his name is the same in Facebook, as so it's twitch.tv slash Scudia Barroca. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to look into maybe a better whole race broadcast. Uh, we're not really sure how to do it. Um, maybe Mental and I will get in the booth. That way we don't race and crash. <laughs> you know. uh, Ted Fort said, uh, what's the consensus on rage quitting and using uh, slurs, generalized slurs, uh, basically probably making fun of our NASCAR friends. I, I, I'm okay with generalized slurs. In sure. Fact, I, I, feel like, I feel like if you're not using a generalized slur, do you really belong with us racing? You know, you're not just, you know, you're a, you know, toe sucking egg liquor. I'm okay with all that kind of That's stuff. That's a specific egg. slur though. Like it's, <laughs> I, I, and I have to say, I prefer these specific targeted slurs at individuals for their driving quality, uh, as opposed to the generalized slurs for, for large mass groups of people. <laughs> and, and it's important when you're on the radio because everyone can hear at the same time that you get real specific. Like, cause I heard people go move to the side and I was like, who are you talking to? Like, like, <laughs> Key the button, say the name, go ahead and curse at them, unkey the button. Well, it's, like it's, it's, press, press F3 and it gives you a list of who's in front of you and behind you and by how far. So, and that I like, I put that up and it stays there all the time. So I know, oh, I got Jeff in front of me. All right, I'll be there to about half a lap. I'll be past you. <laughs> no problem. Sure. Sure. It's just a little hard to see. It's kind of down. I mean, it's fine, I guess, if you're on the street and no one else is around, but you have to kind of like, Look yeah, down. With, the, with the VR, you have to actually look down in the car, like at your dash, like your shifter. And I've, I've yeah. noticed that too, because uh, it, it, and it's you know the car goes where you look, and when I'm driving the car, because you're you're doing so much with with, with your visceral inputs, you can look down at the gauges, you can look over at something. But in VR, if I look down, I look up. That car is headed towards a wall every time. Yeah, See, I, I, I'm I, on the. I've gotten really good about just just doing the eyeballs. But then uh, it like kind of hurts your eyes. Good, Jeff. I, I'm on like single <laughs> monitor television, so it's like. <laughs> I, I can see it. It's right there. I can't see my gauges. I can't see the steering wheel. I can't see they're all off the screen. But oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an inch monitor, so yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it's a it's a big TV, but it's a single. So to be <laughs> like like I did like the field of vision thing. So it basically zoomed me into this into the windshield. So I no longer can see any of the gauges for the cockpit. Uh. More discussions about this, though. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, is it me? Ted Ford? Yeah. Did I do Ted Ford? No, we yeah. did Ted Ford. You did. Uh, yeah, uh, did Randy, Randy Bish said, let's get silly. And then he uh, posted 
did, did, Chris, can you explain exactly what's going on? He just called it yeet. Yeah, and it was he, the end of the race. Everyone was sitting around doing, yeeted. Yeah, everyone was sitting around doing burnouts. I was trying to get the solstice to do a burnout unsuccessfully. Like <laughs> 7,000 RPM clutch drops. Nope, don't do it. So I was trying to do that. And he came down the street at Lime Rock and just didn't lift and just, just slammed right in the back right of me. In. Yeah, yeah. And I flew into the woods at the end of, of Lime Rock. Spectacularly. <laughs> I can fly. Yeah. The, the, the shot looked like you were about three stories in the air. Scale oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting. Yeah. And that happened to me this last weekend, too. Tom Lamino, uh, at the end, end of the race, rear-ended me, <laughs> spun me out. I went off a berm at Summit Point at about 110 and f- just, just way into the woods. Like, so, I would have cleared so, the access road. So I did the same thing. I just drove and then, like, jerked the steering wheel to go over the same berm. But obviously i do it slower than you so i was at like 80 i wasn't even like close like in the middle of the straightaway i still wasn't over 100 and i jumped it pretty good it was fun yeah, why not crash absolutely. right there you go uh bill fisher was with us and he asked why his how his lovely bride uh vicky could watch the races and dave said it best let vicky drive yeah, and Bill sent me a question, too. He said, listener question, if you have a multiple driver household with one sim, is there a way to have the non-driving driver, non-dri- okay, yeah, a non-driving yeah. driver be able to hear the in-car talk? We figured out the video, but the car radio part still lose us. Thank you for the racing opportunity. It's a great way to get us off the couch and relax a bit instead of working. Even joined a, even joined a real race the next night since it was so much fun. I'm coming for Dave, LOL. Best regards, Bill, Vicky, Jennifer, and Alan. Um, so if you're using headphones for sound, you can get a headphone splitter, Bill. That's exactly what I was person, looking for, my headphone splitter. Yep, the other person can then put headphones into that or just use some external speakers. Hey, just It'll put it on be the there. external speakers, absolutely. Yep, plug into the stereo, whatever it is. That, that was a great way for everyone to hear it. So, um, And for our show on iRace liveries, we posted the Godzilla version of the MX-5 Cup car that Jim did and uh, got a nice response. Darby liked our paint. He called it sick. Alex L. agreed that Jim did a bang-up job. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, he did. It actually looks notably better than the actual car <laughs> on which it's modeled. There's that. <laughs> yeah. Look, okay, that is the best Godzilla livery ever done with a basketball net and a foam roller. Oh yeah, in, a, in like April in when it's cold yeah, in a driveway. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So rally correspondent Santiago liked our last episode. He said it's very interesting episode. I've been exporting in as a ping for the last two weeks since I got into it. Can can, can I make a get a ruling from the podcast? Yeah, I would like to change Santiago's. E1R name. Two. Ooh. Okay, so Mets, I don't know if you've noticed, but that dude is an amazing driver in, in the iRacing. Oh, yeah. He yes. is a freaking wheel. He's an amazing driver across well, the board. We don't I mean, know that because we've never actually seen that, but he wins. He wins in rally sure. where like professionals don't finish. Sure. So I, I think we get it drifting. Yes, that, that I, I I think we need to call him like the Cam, like the virtual Camaro Wrangler or something like that. I say Captain Drifto. Captain, Captain Drifto. Drifto, love it. Yes. Captain Drifto, you yeah, are now. Are, are we are, are we are we racist if we call him Capitan Drifto? Santiago, let us know if we're racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. I'm on day 35 of Duralingo to learn Spanish. Oh so, come on! You're going to France. Learn French, dude. Don't live with a French woman. Uh. Uh. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to night school, take Spanish, and get a B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. Anyway, no, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> James F. Uh, F. M. wondered if we were bringing back the S and M theme. I do not think we will do that. But as much I'm as doing it, it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think about doing it until right now, and I'm doing it. Okay, we'll see a Citroen. That's a not. That's a Solstice. I think I'm going to do it on the Camaro. Okay, I have a Camaro. Yeah. I do oh, get a ball gag on a Camaro. I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, meanwhile, on the gram, the scrapyard food, scrappy. 
are scrappy are the fugies. Oh, it says it here. This is what it was. Refugees. Okay, grabbed our line on the IG and asked what asked what you're working on. One provided us updates on his 944 project, including a fuel tank clean out, which is the worst. I mean, like we did on the solstice. The lemon blackheads didn't realize we were on YouTube. So uh, if the iPhone isn't enough, these episodes are now on YouTube. Oh gosh, you don't you want to see us every week? I suppose nope. um, the lemon blackheads were more <laughs> dancing people from now on. Awesome. Finally, wouldn't be a show if we didn't mention our European based Erling, who took uh, to YouTube to say, Just love you all, my favorite fools. This week I'm homesick and got a good laugh from you. Hope, hope you are feeling better. Uh, glad we could make you smile. Uh, hope it ain't the COVID, Erling. Mm -hmm. Regular flu. Everybody cross your fingers for the regular Or flu. allergies. Allergies. Or, or honestly, better. hungover. Maybe he was just hungover. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, hungover. Yeah. Let's vote for hungover. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, known NSXer and mega awesome person who always makes us smile, even though she thinks it's too loud. <laughs> I'd just like to say hi to Chrissy's mom, and it's not too loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bird. Hey, topic. Hi. Do we have a single main topic today, everybody? No. This is a main topic tech tip twofer NSLTs i got wow <laughs> terrific yeah can, so, can, can i give a little intro on this because it'll also plug next week a little yeah mm. all right so we are finding ourselves doing lots of smaller jobs because we're all on coronation and we thought this is like two real easy things that we can knock out real quick, which is great because you could do them since you're not commuting. You could do them on the way home. And we want to put a call out because next week we're going to do the same thing, but we want your quick trips, your quick tips. Whew. Quick tips. Send us your quick tech tips next week. Here are two, count them, two quick tips. Tepidly timed, two tech tips. Yeah. And I don't think these are necessarily <laughs> quick, too. Neither of these are, are big enough to do a whole show or yeah, a whole main segment, exactly. especially right now. We got nothing else to talk about. Uh, so we can't have a long main topic about either of these, but we can have two of them for a main topic. So here we go. I'm going to start us off today with tire temperatures. How do you test it? And then once you do, what the hell do you do with that information? And later on, Jeff's going to talk about <laughs> Creating your own video rear view mirror. So it's, uh, this, is, this is good stuff. Consumer advice here. Um, well, all right. So tire well, now, and, and let me, uh, and I know I didn't type this up, sorry. Uh, so back in the day, I have not messed with a pyrometer, tire pyrometer, since like you had the needle kind that you had to stick in autocross tires back in the day of shoe polish and all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually going to be taking notes. Okay. You've all heard like, oh, you should, what are your tire temps? What, you know, you should check those. How, how is your suspension set up? Are your tire temps okay? And nobody, nobody knows, right? Like you don't do that because you, you're, you're not that serious. Well, I decided to just try it sometime because, hey, what the hell? Um, so first off, you need to take the temperature somehow. And there, you can't just use a rectal thermometer on your tires. It doesn't work very well. So you need to find. You can't get it inside. No, but they don't no have way. any ear holes to just like stick, nope. you know, like. You can get it inside once, but then you take it, it out and it's useless. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's two methods to do this. One is the standard laser pyrometer that, you know, the kind you check your brake temperatures with or, or whatever, or that, that's, that's one way. That measures the surface temp of the tires. The other way is the good way. And mental, that's what you were talking about. The little needle you stick in your tires is called a probe pyrometer because that measures the temperature actually in the rubber and not on the surface, especially because the surface temperature can change really quickly from the time you come off the track to the time you get to your pit spot to check it. Hmm. You know, especially if the track, if the pavement's cold and you're no longer pushing the tires, the outside surface is going to cool right off but the inner layer is going to hold the heat. So you want the probe pyrometer, stick a few millimeters into the, tri into the tire, meat of the tire, and that's going to tell you what the temperature in the meat of it actually is. I honestly figured the lasers had completely replaced the, uh, the needle ones. All right, no, cool. No, the, the we, we went back actually, to it. Yeah, the needle ones are actually more expensive because they're better and more accurate. Hmm. So there's okay. that. Um, so 
Uh, I'm going to talk about exactly when to do this, and Chrissy's going to tell us how to do this. So um, when you want to do this is when, the, when you've been running the car hard, because that's what you're trying to figure out. Is what it, if we're driving around normally, you're not loading the tires and loading suspension the way you are in a race. So you need to take some good solid race laps, like at least five. Get everything really hot and upper temperature. Drive it hard. And you drive it hard right until you come in up to the pits. Like, you know, no cool down laps, none of that, even though that's usually nice to do. No cool down laps. Drive it hard, bring into the pits, don't speed in the pits, get to your paddock and have everyone in the paddock ready to go the moment you get there. Because the longer you wait, the more the temperatures are going to change from what they were on the track. So, okay. Chrissy, what that's do we interesting. I never thought of that. Mm. Well, now you're learning something. Why so, do you think I yell at you guys all like, get ready? We no, got to do right, the tires. So, hold on, hold on. So, I, so I'm taking over here because I, now it's my turn. So when Chris comes in, so he, no, no, because this is the part that I do. So he says on the radio, he has another half a lap. We deploy everybody. So everybody who's going to be involved, there's needs to be more than one person. So Chris, one person is the. is so big. Your what is so Chris's big? microphone is so big. <laughs> That's what she said. I'm oh, sorry. Keep going, Chrissy. Somebody interrupts Chrissy. Just put it up on your, your <laughs> card. Hopefully you get your bingo. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay. So everybody, so I need, you need a paper person and you need a pyrometer person. So you need a person who's going to test the parts in the tire. So you have to decide. So I'm tempted to say you have to decide where on the tire you are going to probe and keep it consistent. It's going to change depending. Give me a second and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so on our tires, we have three different portions of tire. So we have a outside, middle, inside. Your tires may be different depending on the type of tires, the, the brand of tires that you're running, but you need to have multiple places on the tire to test to make, go ahead, just go. No, you're absolutely right. You all, but you always do it outside, inside, you know, outside, middle, inside. You have to do the three locations. I don't yes. care what, I don't care what your tread design is. I don't care what your tire okay. brand is. You, you have to do that every time. But that's, how you, you, that's how you get the measurements. But then you need to figure out where that's going to be on each tire for multiple times. Cause you're going to do this probably at least two times, if not three as you're testing to get good different types of, okay. Yeah. Depends on how much you're changing and how okay. many things you want to We've do. We've usually done it a couple times, but I suppose that's when you're kind of come in and talk about what we're actually changing. So anyway, all right, come in at your, give us half a lap. You say, okay, I'm coming in. Don't speed in the pits. Um, and I think you can typically get this done. Our pits, especially when we've been running it, um, at most of the places were pretty close to pit out, but I would say you could even just pull over to some place that's off of the beaten path, but close to where pit out is. That makes it so that you can get the readings closer to the track because you're going to get them as they're hotter. So come off track right away. I agree where all y'all are going to stand and make sure that you know what's going to happen. Uh, the driver's going to come in and turn the wheel one way. You're going to say, I'm going to do the driver's side first. So the driver comes in, steps, turns the wheel. So the wheel is sticking out. So you can kind of see it a little bit better, especially if your wheel tucks in the wheel well a little bit. Then you're going to go inside, middle, outside. You're going to stick the probe in. You're going to say the word. And then you already have it on a piece of paper. And the person that's writing it down writes it down. So you can not have to remember when what your numbers were. And you can keep track of multiple times if you have to do this while you're changing things. So inside, middle, outside, uh, it's much slower than this. And then you run around and do all of the tires. We usually, I guess it depends on what you're changing, correct? Um, but really, it's one of those, it's two people you say the same thing, you can repeat it back to each other like you're in surgery and you, um, and you, the person that's writing it down writes it down and then you can make sure that you know what your times are or your uh, temperatures are. That's when I pass it to you. Yep. And it's a good idea for the person who's writing it down to prepare the paper ahead of time, like right, left front, right front, and then right, you know, inside, middle, outside. Like, you know, so you have your columns clearly sorted. And then on the left side, you can write down like the time that it is. So you remember what happens when, so you can do something with this data later on. So mental. So if I understand you correctly, Chrissy, <clears throat> you are purposely prescribing a pair of pit pyrometer personnel, a probing pyrometer professional paired with a pen and paper <clears throat> person prepared to prescribe the information. <laughs> is that, is that, how long did you work on that? 
I know. I thought you were writing notes and like actually listening. No. 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 Actually, actually, I was, and then it I, became that. I, I'm, I, I, when I when we get to my topic, I hope I get a alliterative question. <laughs> Good. Yes, I am. Okay. So now what? You've got these measurements. You've got three measurements for each tire. What do you do? Okay. You're looking for differences between hot and cold. Where are your gradients? A perfect tire will have the inside as the hottest, just slightly, and then the middle a little cooler and the outside a little cooler. That's really where you want it. Uh, that's a nice even gradient, um, but a, again, a little warmer in the inside. That means you have enough camber so that when you overdrive the car, which typically chews off the outside, that you're, you're, it's going to end up about right. So what if it's different than that? Well, let's see. It depends on how. If the middle is higher than the outsides, both inside and outside, that means your tire pressures are too high. Because if the tire has ballooned out, the middle is doing more of the work, temperature is too high. That means pressure has to go down. If your middle is too low, it's the opposite. Your pressure is too low. You got to put a little more pressure in it to try to even it out. So that's, that's your tire pressure that, that you can find out from the pyrometer. The other thing you can find out is your suspension. Camber and toe will change your readings for the inside and outside. If you have too much camber, your inside is going to get a lot hotter than your outside. Again, if you have too little camber, you're riding the shoulders, the outsides are gonna be a lot hotter than the inside, so you need to change that. But it's not just camber that does that, it's also toe. Like you can have just right camber, but toe in, it's gonna get the outsides hot. You can have negative camber and toe in, and the insides and outsides are gonna be hot. So if you get your suspension pretty well close to where you think it is, start making changes one at a time. Don't change a whole bunch of things and go back out. That's not gonna give you the data you can use really. Make a change, do a couple laps because the car's already warm. You go out and do two or three laps, it's enough. Take your temperatures again. What changed? What can you do about it? And it's really like find the hot spots, figure out how to even the hot and cold spots out, whether it be with pressure changes or whether it be with suspension alignment changes. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one of the things you said is make sure you have columns. Uh, a yeah. lot of picture people do it with pictures. Little little picture of the car, little picture of the car, little picture of the car, yeah. put headlights on it, taillights. Bam. As long as you know, but it makes more sense with the tire so you know inside, middle, outside. Because you're looking you at the can, tires. You I'm with right Chrissy. I, I, draw, I draw four tires and then I divide them into three yeah. sections. Yeah. And, as and long as you've got down. room to write multiple sets of results uh -huh. so you can directly compare them. Because you want to see the next time you come in, how, what does this change from last time? Because you're not going to remember. Or you get the other one, you're holding it. Well, which is up? Which is, yeah, which yeah. is which the, is the, which, are the which is the headlights? Which are the taillights? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Just get it all the same so you can compare results. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, go on. No, that's it. Just you know, make your change, test, repeat. You try to get it as even as you can. And this also applies to iRacing too. There, if you go into the garage to change the setup, if you've been running, it'll tell you your tire temperatures. Really? In the setup. Didn't know yeah. that. In the, same, in the same spot where you get the reading for F3 that you can't see on your screen, you can uh, scroll through that. Yeah. Or, or you can go into the garage and do it. But it's only once you've come into the pits that it gives it to you. It doesn't give you real time temperatures as you're going because you don't have that as a driver usually um but like that's how my solstice is faster than your solstice jeff is i did things like that and i, I know got nothing the setup better that's another reason i'm moving to the jetta no <laughs> settings you cannot change any settings Fantastic. you can you can you can you can change no you can, the only thing fuel tire level. pressures no fuel level tire really? pressures are, are locked huh. yeah Oh, because it's so, a, a spec cup car. It's a, yeah, it's thing. a cup car. Yep, exactly. So anyway, uh, I, I, I'm feeling weird because you all had a tech tip and mine's like a consumer tip. Actually, I, mean, I guess it's a we, tech tip. We've argued about tip. this. And I remember we, we've, we've had conversations with Todd Carver and he has uh, the, the hard top he put on his, his WRL Miata made the rear view mirror useless. And he put a screen in there. And ever since then, I have been a big proponent and I'm really happy that we're going down this path. I'm a big fan of screens, but you got to put them intuitively. And I'm sure you're going to talk about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. You so, never drove the Solstice, did you, Mental? <laughs> I, never did. I never did. That thing is, you might as well have a, a, 
a green screen behind you for what you can see. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, this is all about creating your own rearview mirror out of video cameras and little cheap ass screens. Uh, I'm going to throw the thanks out to Chris Egan for kind of doing this first in his long roof for life sob because uh, he said it was really hard to see out of. I'd also like to thank the brave souls who piloted the solstice because as Chris mentioned, you can't see anything out of it. Uh, I pulled one of the drivers who took it and he said, holy shit, I can't see out of the back of this thing. And I drive a 914 on the track. <laughs> it's an average solstice driver. Um, so, so here's the deal. This is, this is not heavy tech. This is not rocket science. If you can't figure this out, but what you got to do is you got to just do it. Um, you need a screen and you need a camera and they plug it together. And if you can't figure it out, you shouldn't be driving a car. Um, but I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the consumer and what you're buying and what's out there. You can mix and match. I can match. tell you a little about the installation because yeah. I actually did it. Sure. I, I mean, I've done it on other cars. So, yeah. um, but, so here's the deal. You cannot believe how cheap the little tiny monitors are and the little tiny cameras are that are specifically designed to be rear view cameras. Mm -hmm. um, on Amazon, you can buy, basically they have two size screens, 4.3 inch and seven inch. Um, you don't need to make sure that A works into B because they'll all work together. Um, they have some that are like rear view mirror style, but they're kind of weird and we're gonna not suggest them because they act as mirrors and monitors. So basically, if you leave it on, you always can't use the mirror. And if you don't leave it on, why the frick do you have it? So I'm just saying, don't bother with the mirror combo ones. They're more expensive. Just buy a screen, 4.3 or seven inch. The 4.3s are small. So if you're going to use one, you probably don't want to use that as your main mirror. You want to use that as a combined mirror. Uh, Chris Egan has multiple, multiple cameras and multiple, multiple screens. So he uses some of the smaller ones. I think he uses 4.3s. I did not ask him because we don't have time. We come up with the shit on the fly sometime. <laughs> um, but the sevens are really big and the sevens are probably what you want to use. Here's the deal. A seven inch screen on Amazon are 30 to 50 bucks all day long you can buy them from multiple sources you can have one drop shipped to your house in like 24 hours there's no reason not to buy the full seven inch the 4.3s can be bought in a package with a camera for like 40 bucks cameras alone are like 20 to 40 bucks these things are so cheap you really got to do it i know chris is going to say something go ahead chris so what you're saying is you find seven inches to be a lot more satisfying than 4.3. Yes, okay. of course I do. Good. Thank um, you. Even so, multiple 4.3s yeah. still do not bring him the same level as one single seven. Actually, two 4.3s or 3.43s I think would be just as good as a seven. <laughs> Look. This is consumer advice. This is right consumer here. advice. Uh, I'm, I'm going to quote... Uh, Andrew Clay, some of you may know him. He goes by Dice. He says, my wife said, give me 12 inches and make it hurt. So I effed her twice and hit her in the head with a brick. <laughs> Chrissy, did you not like that joke? You've heard it before. Yeah, I, I, love, I, love, that he, I love that he singled out Sorry. Chrissy for not laughing, but the rest of us are. Right? Thanks. I, How many I, times I think, have we heard that joke now? I know. I think he said three times, but anyway. Actually, here's the more important thing. You've heard that joke four times. How many times was it funny? Every time. Back to the topic. Here's the deal. There's two, count them, two wires that you need to worry about when wiring the sucker. Electric and feed. Bam, you're done. Can you figure out which one? There is a third wire. Ground. What does that do? Wait, 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 what does wait, wait, it wait. do? Wait a minute. I already counted. I counted. You said count them. Two. Count them. Two. There's, I also, went, there's, one there's a two. ground. Power, and there's a third. That's power, a third. You're right. Power and ground. You know what I mean. There's only two things that you need. Obviously, you need power and ground to make power happen. You don't need but grounds. You do need can grounds. I, can I just cut them off? You can't cut them off. Listen, here's the deal. They also have a third little loop, which, is, house really, with an MG. You which is what I was trying to get to. So, so in a regular car, these things are designed for when you put it in reverse, 
then the screen turns on and the camera turns on. We're not wiring it like that. So you get the directions and you just throw them out. You run hot and cold, end the thing, and there's another little loop. That little loop puts lines so that you can reverse into the parking spot. You just clip that sucker and the lines go away. Um, not all of them have that loop. Not all of them cut. have that loop, yes. You, so, okay, you got to read the instructions a little. That you yeah. just threw away after counting one, two wires, then there's a third wire. Switch you power. To, you have to power the camera and the screen. And the screen, yes. So and they also ground both of them and they just connect them together. Yes. They are so simple. They have plugs. You, if you can't, yeah. if you can wire a light bulb, you can wire this thing. So on the Solstice, there are no switched power locations in that car. Like Ooh. that's all hand bus and stuff. So ours is is on. It's hot. It's it's off the you know the radio fuse, but uh, I just put a switch in. So when you're driving, you just turn the switch on. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I I do you want to talk about mounting? Like here's the deal. Put it where your eyes are. Where your eyes go to in a natural way, if you saw a mirror there, it would make sense. That's where you want to put your cameras, you, or that's where you want to put your screens. The cameras, you want to act as your eyes outside the car. So like high and center is where you want to look at the rear of your car. And from the middle of the car or even maybe further up back is how you want to look in the side view mirrors. Think about where a side view mirror is. That's the best place to put your camera. Yes, if you're like some JDM guy and you want it off the front fenders, that could work too. I was impressed at how wide the angle of the view is. Like I put the one, I screwed it to the bottom of the side mirror. Um, and here, so here's a top tip. Don't mount your cameras until you've got the screens going so you don't put them on upside down. <coughs> right. I'm glad I did this. Good, on good the thought. Yeah, I, on the this was the one I was screwed to the bottom of the mirror. I was thinking about putting it on the top of the mirror. But I said, "Let me see which side is up," and it's a good thing I did. But once I had that going, I could put this the angle of it almost to like forty five degrees, and it'll still show the side of the car, and it'll show everything, including what's right next to you. So it, it'll go very broadly. If you yeah, they're the designed to remove blind spots. Yeah, so they are very wide. Mental. Um, oh, go ahead, mental. And you guys were talking about the solstice because the solstice had the blind spots. And we mentioned uh, Miatas with Haritas blind spots too. I also drove the Fat Crack Honda Accord. No blind spots. Wonderful Honda Accord visibility all the way around. They still, because it was 45 bucks for a screen and a camera, went ahead and mounted one. Really nice situational awareness enhancing piece of equipment. It's, you can look in the mirrors and then still look at your rear view license plate level camera and get situational awareness on what's happening behind you. Who's dicing it up? How's that going to play out in a few minutes when you come into the next turn, when that faster car is coming at you kind of a deal. So this is not just for cars with blind spots. If you've really got a good dialed and sorted car and you're looking for a cheap way to kind of bring it up just a little bit, these cameras are really effective. Yeah, and uh, the last thing I'm going to tell you is, uh, Chris, how easy is it to mount one of these suckers to actually connect it to the car? Uh, well, it's like a well, zip screw. Yeah, it's a lemon's car. I use zip screws. <laughs> <laughs> like, I screwed, it, I screwed it into the dash. They're, they're uh, designed to be outside. I mean, the cameras. I'm talking about the cameras yeah. now, not the screens. Oh, well, that they're, one, I put I put one in the license plate holes because that's what they're designed for. Uh -huh. And the other one, I just use zip screws into the bottom of the mirror, again, because lemon's car, like, it's fine. And then even the ones in the dash, it just I took the mounts and sure they're supposed to be stick on. I, I put stuck them on, but then I zip screwed those too. Cause hey, racing. These things are a no brainer. They're dirt cheap. If you if you can wire a light bulb, you can wire them. Find a way, like you know, Chris Egan like used this 3D printer and built like you know really cool mounts and stuff. You you could do that, or you could just zip screw and duct tape the, the sewn bitch in there and be done with it. Levin's car. You figure it out. Yep. Bottom line, put, they're cheap. You should be doing it. And we put the big seven inch on the Solstice right on the dashboard, just to the right of the, the steering wheel and the gauges, but right kind of at the top of the curve of the dash. So it's out of your line of sight. So you're, you know, it's not blocking your visibility out the windshield, but it's right there. But it's there. a so, simple eye move to get right into the center of it. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Friend of friends. I put my big seven inch Right there in the line of visibility. In the what's middle. Everyone, what's everyone looking at? What? 
Thank you. It's a timely, themely reference. That's great. For, for those that know that are of our theme of the ambiguously gay duo and have heard of it. Because yeah. I've, I've actually found out some people don't know what that is. Even people who were, I thought would. Who knows? Yeah. Some people aren't cool. I know. It's a the shame. best lemon seeds are the ones that like 30% of the paddock gets and 70% doesn't get. Yep. <laughs> I, I have a quick, super quick thing on that. So every Friday we have a theme for our, um, our work party. So we have a, a call with all of our uh, team on Zoom and we're up from all over the United States. And so last one was your favorite character. So we're just sitting here trying to figure out like, what characters do I do? I'm like, I don't do that character. And then my, I think it was my mom was like, what about Strong Bad? And I was like, oh, two okay. Two Strong Bad references in two weeks. Right? So I put the Strong Bad mask on and there was one person who knew about it. And she, and she is a little younger than me. She's actually my employee. And she only knew about it because her husband is a super dork and knew about it. And so, <laughs> uh, and so most people were, I had two other employees that I was hoping that were like close to my age, kind of might have gone to college at the same time or you know, might have been around a computer when people cared about Monday's new Strong Bad coming out because that was a thing. Um, but anyway. Not many people just knew what it was. And I was like, it's how, a do you, how do you type with those cups on? Right. How do you not I, I, I was at a Zoom meeting today with my staff and I said, I'll send it to you an email. And I went, click, 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 open up the email. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't understand. No, they did. One person oh, got it. One person oh, was like, good. Are, you, are you doing strong, man? I was like, yes. How do I type with these gloves on? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, wow. That's it. I, I, that's the end of my story. I, I, there's, there's, it, it's simple. It's cheap. Do it. Yeah. And you know what? Do it on your, do it on your trailering vehicle too. Tow pig can't see out the back. Got a trailer. Why not? It's tempting to put them on the trailer, like one on each side yeah. and yeah. one on the back. Why not? And, but that's a long ass way to run the cable. I don't know if there's a uh, wireless. You know what? Uh, they do. They do have wireless ones, but they get a little bit more expensive. But the, the, you can also get the wired ones with a quick disconnect in the same place that you plug in your brake lines and your your traffic lights. And that's basically how GM does their invisible trailer thing, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Mm hmm. It's, nope. it's, it's just a quick connect on the, the trailer hitch. And yeah, you, I've been cut off by a few trailers that probably could have used a, a little bit more situational awareness of, Hey, your trailer's about a foot longer than you think it is. Here, here's Buddy. a tip. If you're doing a trailer setup, uh, the seven inch ones, a lot of them have multiple inputs. So you can actually do a split screen, like half of it what's behind your trailer and half of it, what's behind your truck. Well, and in those cases, you don't cut the wires to those cameras. You wire them up to your turn signals. That's how my RV operates. If Ooh. you do the left turn signal, my input is the turn left on side the left of the one, RV yeah. and yeah, so on. That's so cool. Yeah, you can Which is especially that. helpful when mental's mirrors were completely smashed in his RV and that was the only way he could see uh, it. Like, like I've never one, driven. Just the one RV. <laughs> uh, like I've never driven an RV without a mirror out there. Because <laughs> Those trees uh, going into Summit <laughs> Point get really close to the road. Oh, uh, the damage so, that we've done to my father's RV. <laughs> Again, so another thing that's hit everything but the library. Library. <laughs> lottery, I, would argue, lottery. No, I would argue your first statement is probably every bit is correct. I don't think we've hit a library <laughs> that yet. That RV hasn't learned a damn thing. Doug not learned a damn thing. <laughs> I feel Shut like it's time for everybody's favorite. Well, already, <laughs> I'm, I'm told premer, premature enunciation can happen to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing quick tips for now. Uh, this is kind of half-assed, but this is what I come up with. So uh, wash your hands, wear a mask, uh, but more importantly, be nice to people. Go ahead. Please. I, I, I saw Chrissy typing this and I interjected on this one. And her next point is, is it all comes down to is everyone right now is stressed. Everyone. Can I just read? And, and, and it's, it's- You can read it for Clearly you. not. Clearly. No, no, I just, I, 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 it just, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm involved in my neighborhood community, online community here, and so many people oh. just get on there and they post about, why are there all these people out here? And I'm like, okay, look, Karen, get over it. You, you, you don't know what's going on in their world. Just, you know, kind of worry about you and just be a little more accepting. 
and I'm sorry. That that was my soapbox. I'll get off. Mic mic drop. I don't have anything else to say. No, no, no. Your your point is good. Please. <laughs> it's fine. All right, it's fine. All right. So my my point is be patient. You don't know what's going on in people's heads. This thing takes people in different ways. Some people uh say that since you aren't going anywhere, at least uh, your life isn't that much different. Your brain might be doing different things. So you might be more tired. You might be uh, really unmotivated, uncharacteristically mo unmotivated, or you might be really more motivated. Um, Hamza. Yeah. Uh, uh, you might be having nightmares. Uh, that's me. Uh, I'm like terrible every night nightmares just because my brain is like out of things to worry about in life. Uh, so I, I'm serious. Like it's, it's not fun. Um, so anyway. There's a good article in the Atlantic about this actually recently. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. like to see that. Yeah, really, just because your brain doesn't have the things that's going on I, normally. I, I have my sleep pattern has gotten even worse. And that's, it's that's really bad hard for, you. for me to get even worse. Mm -hmm. Yep. So anyway, um, even if you have different people, some people have different opinions than you do, uh, or you think that they don't care. This is just taking everybody differently. So be patient, walk away, um, unless you're for Facebook friends with Jeff and like just spout off when you post political posts, uh, keep doing that if you feel like fighting because it's hilarious. And I would argue that, you know, our, our, uh, the, even our Instagram feed has become a repository for, uh, memes that I find amusing and not necessarily politically offensive. Uh, bearded grease monkey has been a source of much joy for the followers of E1R on Instagram. Bruce particularly found the one about the, um, if you stay at home, don't eat out and make your own food, you'll lose weight. Nope. Quarantine has proven that. Quarantine false. proven that wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm. I really probably should have said this in what you're working on, but I actually spent a, a decent amount of a day sewing masks. Uh, I, I Hamsa sent me about eight. Uh, I happen to have a roll of elastic, so I've been sewing masks for friends and family, and we have a bunch of because I am a crafty kind of guy, and I like. A, I like my uh, sewing. Because Jeff is crafty, like ice is cold. It's true. Uh, so we had a lot of material laying around here, and I made some really cool masks. The, the lady at the pizza place was like, your mask is awesome. And I was like, yeah, it is. I made it. Uh, so if Actually, there's anybody out there. No, no, it is. I totally made it. It's great. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's Thompson's design, so I have to shout out to him. But if there are people out there that need masks, uh, hit me up. I got masks. Uh, I can mail them it is, it is. I got it parts. Is Hit us both up because Vicky has also been making masks. She's yeah. made them for all of my family. She's made them for a few people in my office. Uh, and I'm she's, she's now making designs. A, uh, she's yeah, making a stack to donate to the local homeless shelter. Yeah, I, don't, I, I ran out of elastic. I don't have that many, but I have enough for friends and family. And everyone listening, your friends and family. So if you need one, hit me That's up. Fact, huh. Erling, Erling, if you need a mask, let us know. Yeah, it'll I'll be there in up. about six months. Cause right. I'll, I'll shipping it there. Shipping there is not. I ain't, I ain't scared it's to ship Sweden, it to the Netherlands. The Netherlands. <laughs> it's not the Netherlands. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, if you I'm send it there, he'll never get it. <laughs> yeah, he'll never get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> get it in the Netherlands. Some Dutch I, uh, guys, you were like, "What? What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Some Dutch guy be like, "Is this sexual?" Uh, I'm going to make it sexual anyway. Does anybody no. really know how to speak Dutch? Come on, let's be honest. The the, no. the Dutch. Like that. <laughs> the two, Look, there's only two things I hate: intolerance. And the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lucky us. I'm right, pulling, are we done and, now? No, let's, <laughs> somebody pitch the next show again. What is our um, next show? Oh, tech tips. Tech tips from everybody and oh, from us. Okay. Have what, a no, 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 no. It's not? Read, read, short no, tips. Read, read, Chris, read. Well, no, we already pro we are, no, we already, we already promoted it. Early no. in their show, we said next week we're doing tech yes, tips. but read what Chrissy wrote because she's right. She, a live show. We Boom. could do a live show too. We're totally yeah. gonna show. do a live show. All right, All right. but it doesn't live mean show of tech tips. Send it doesn't mean you app. can't We're send so them in anyway. We're so belligerent today. He's this. been drinking. <laughs> well, send, not just you know how he gets. No, no, no. Hold on, man. I'm, I'm calling an audible. Enthusiastic. I'm calling an audible. I'm enthusiastic. We can do a live show if you have a tech tip and you send it in to us. Yes. And you're on the live show. I can turn on your mic and you could tell us your tech tip live. That just happened you didn't have to get all upset then i'm not upset i'm enthusiastic yes yes you are yes you are. yes you are i i i'm, I, I'm I the believe... little kid that we posted on our facebook page at the race weekend i 
I, I believe we have mentioned that you're enthusiastic before. Like, Mental Every rotated episode. those corded tires. Didn't he look? He's enthusiastic. Just let him go. Uh, thanks for that. De- <coughs> Excuse me. Podcast voice. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because we all want to get out of COVID bunker. And so do you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It is totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. Which any- might be a new requirement for the iRacing Password. If you want sure. the iRacing Password, you may have to give us a no, five-star review. Just, just, just ask us. <clears throat> breaks, racing breaks, four letters. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the digital side up, unless your internet connection is terrible, and then you're just going to flip Chrissy over, and her wheels will not be down. <laughs>